So first of all, I feel like I should start off by saying this topic is a very sensitive topic. And although I'm not going to be getting explicit or very graphic, I still feel like I should give that warning. Another thing, if at any point I look down on my notes, especially towards the end of the movie, the video, I'd just like to apologize. Um, there were some things that I thought were really important that I should just say. So let me start off with the story time and then get into it. So I met this guy and him and I really started to hit it off. Physically, he was one, two, and three, okay. He was just it. And we were very physically attracted to each other. We started talking, we started to get to know each other. And then soon after the dates, you know, followed, we would go on dates, we would hang out, um, nothing too hectic. Um, we were just really getting to know each other and I was enjoying his presence. I felt he was enjoying mine. We had so much to share. We had so much in common as well. So there was a lot to talk about all the time. And then of course that chemistry was so authentic it was there it was organic and it was there especially because we'd gotten to know each other outside of you know chatting and social media it was really him and i spending one-on-one -on -one time together so a couple of months after having spent that one-on-one -on -one time together he eventually was like yo lala why don't you come to my house for movies and again i didn't think much of it because I've been going on dates with this guy. I, I know him and he knew how much I loved movies. I'm a movie head. I can do movie marathons all day. And he knew that. And that was one of the things that really drew us to each other. He also loved movies. So of course, when he was like, why don't you come over for movies? I was there for it. And the new Beauty and the Beast movie had come out. I really wanted to see it. So I said, okay, I'll come. Go to his place and when we get there, it's just a really beautiful day out. Um, it's the sun is out, no cloud in the sky. Um, it was just, it was a beautiful day. Got there, had something to eat, went outside on his balcony to have something to drink. It was non-alcoholic, not that that makes, you know, but it was non-alcoholic. We were staying refreshed, you know, um, hydrated, beautiful day. Now, he happened to be closer to the top floor, so he had a beautiful view of the city from his apartment. And again, it was a beautiful day out. So we were really just relaxed, having a good time. Eventually, I was like, yo, let's go inside. I really want to watch this movie. And he was like, okay, cool. We go in, he puts the movie on. Now, when he put the movie on, he was still on his phone. So he wasn't really paying attention because he had watched the movie and I was here. I really want to see what's going on. I've heard so much hype about this movie. So the movie starts and within 30 minutes, now we're sitting on a couch. So let me just paint the, 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 so that you have a clear picture. We're sitting on a couch, relatively long couch, couch, L-shaped. So we're sitting on the couch and he's on his phone and he's sitting not next to me, but you know, an arm's length away from me. And as the movie starts, he kind of shifts towards me. I don't think anything of it because I've been in this guy's presence before. We've been on dates. I'm comfortable with him. I'm feeling him. I'm attracted to him. So I'm not thinking it's a thing. He moves closer to me on the couch. And before I knew it, he had his hand on my lap to be more specific, kind of my inner thigh area. Took his hand and I was like, uh, uh, uh. no, sir. That's not how we do it here. And for me, again, it wasn't that I wasn't attracted to him. It was just the way in which he did it. It just felt so forceful and presumptuous. Like, what? why do you feel you can just touch my inner thigh? So I moved his hand and I was like, uh-uh. But even then, I wasn't being, you know, particularly aggressive or in his face or, you know, the energy was still here. So I removed his hand and he laughed it off. And I thought, okay, he was just chancing at whatever. Get a phone call from my friend. Now, of course, at that time, we had made it a thing that if you go and visit somebody, a guy, if I'm visiting a guy, we call to keep on checking up on each other. Even if you know that guy, we call to keep on checking up to make sure everything is good. And so she was doing that. She was checking up on me. So I answered the call and her and I are chatting, we're chatting, we're chatting. And I noticed... Um, through the corner of my eye that he keeps on looking over at me. So I'm on the phone, he's here, and I see him, you know, just looking over at me like. So 
so at some point i'm like okay and then it occurs to me maybe i'm disturbing i'm disrupting him you know he, th there's a movie playing I'm, I'm maybe making him feel uncomfortable so i was like oh my god oh my, i'm so sorry would you like me to take it out and he was like no 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 don't worry about it so i keep talking to my friend and i notice again he keeps on looking over at me he keeps on looking over at me guys probably two three minutes into my conversation with my okay it was not that long probably about a minute minute and a half into the conversation with my friend because now she's explaining to me on the phone that she'll be going here 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 he does this to my face and he leans in to kiss me so i'm like what are you doing he laughs it off again now i'm feeling a bit weird because you can see i'm on the phone and now you're doing all of these things you've put your hand on my inner thigh i didn't respond well to that and now you're trying to kiss me on my mouth what are you doing and so, of course, I did that to him and he laughed it off. And I was just like, no, don't do that. So he laughs it off and he carries on watching the movie. I'm not kidding when I say a couple of seconds later, maybe 30, 40 seconds later, he pulls my face again and he tries to kiss me. At this point, I'm like, stop it. Stop it. I'm, I'm not laughing. It's not cute. Just stop it. I'm on the phone and it is rude. Now... I asked him if he needed me to step out. If he felt I was being rude, he should have said something. But again, I didn't say anything when he was on his phone. And again, guys, please, we'd been together a couple of times. We'd been in each other's presence. So there were certain things that we were used to doing in front of each other that just didn't feel like, you know, it was an issue. So I'm looking at him like, what are you doing? And I'm like, stop it. Don't do that. He laughs. Then he starts poking at me at my sides, pretending to tickle me, putting his hand in like here in my armpit and tickling me on the sides, poking me. And he's laughing and giggling. And I'm like, no, it's not. I'm, I'm not laughing. What are you doing again? Stop it. Now, I don't know what came over me. At this point, I say to my friend, I'll call you back. And I drop the phone and I say to him, what are you doing? Stop it. I'm on the phone. Why are you doing that? Guys. Homeboy stood up from where he was. Remember, he's seated next to me. He stands up from where he is. He kind of comes in front of me, almost straddles me, pushes me kind of gently on the couch, but enough force for me to lay back on the couch. And he pretends to keep tickling me. And I'm now telling him, and I'm saying his name over and over again, like, stop it. I don't enjoy this. What are you doing? It's not funny. Mind you, at this time, I'm wearing a pencil skirt and I'm wearing shapewear shorts, spandex, okay? They're tight. They're tight. These shorts are tight. They're there to keep the gut game in check. They are tight. Before I know it, he's got his hand up my skirt and he's pulling the one leg of my shapewear short to the side so that he has access to my private area so he can put his hand there. And at this point, I'm like, what are you doing? Now I'm getting more frustrated and aggressive. I'm furious at this point. So I'm like, what are you doing? And he keeps on pretending to tickle me and he's laughing. But I know he's not joking at this point because of the force he's using to pull the dress, pull the shorts to the side and tickle me. It's, and I can see this look on his face. He's trying to fake this laughing. But I can tell at this point he's getting serious. So I don't know what came over me at that point. And I looked at him dead in the eye and I said to him, I know what you're doing. I know that you're trying to rape me and you're pretending to joke so that when I tell people what you've done, you can have an alibi, an alibi. you have an alibi. You can pretend that you didn't know what was going on. I told him, you're trying to rape me right now. And he stopped. He stopped, but he didn't stop in an, oh my goodness, I've been caught out, I'm embarrassed, let me just try and nurse the situation and pacify it. No, he stopped in a very angry and forceful manner. Mind you, at this point, again, his skirt is under my dress. Sorry, his hand is under my skirt. He pulls the shorts, he pulls his hand from underneath my skirt, he plonks down on the chair, and now he's huffing and puffing. And I'm pretend I'm not even engaging. I'm not entertaining this. I sit up. I give him one dirty look. He gets up. He goes to the kitchen. He's still huffing and puffing. He's angry. He eventually goes to his bedroom and he slams his door. At this point, I'm like, oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. I'm not about to deal with any of this. So I collect my stuff and I get up so that I can leave. I get out of his apartment, slam the door, get into my car and drive off. At this point, my heart is racing and I'm in such disbelief. 
I'm going over the story in my head over and over like what was this about? How could this happen? What just happened? How could he do something like that? I'm even more concerned because it's occurring to me that baby girl, you almost got raped. This guy was going to rape. If you hadn't looked at him and said what you did, this was going to turn ugly. This was going to turn nasty. And so in my mind, I'm even thinking about how many people has he done this to and gotten away with and pretended he was joking. This guy wasn't joking. He wasn't joking. Eventually got home. Next day, he doesn't say anything. The next day, nothing. Following day, nothing. About a month passes and during that time, I've had time to simmer and I started doing what a lot of people do which was I started to second guess myself. Like, did I perhaps overreact? Was I thinking or feeling something that wasn't there? Started blaming myself as well. Like, why was I in his apartment? Yes, you knew him, but why did you go over there? Did you send the wrong message? What was going on? Didn't speak to him for about two, three months. Eventually, two, three months down the line, I'm at... Um, I'm attending a party and I see, and I'm standing in the car park waiting for a shuttle to come fetch us, to take us to this, um, to the venue. And I see him in the car park holding another lady's hand. And he starts coming in my, towards me, like in my direction. And I think, no, there's no way he's coming to me. He's just not going to walk up to me. He just doesn't have those guts. Never. He's coming towards me because the shuttles are behind me. He's not going to say anything. This punk will not say a thing. Oh, no. Homeboy came over holding this lady's hand tight and he's like, Lala, how are you? This is my girlfriend. So I'm looking at him like, and that has what to do with me exactly. In retrospect, I feel terrible because I'm sure that lady thought I was feeling some type of way because... I was with this guy at some point. I had feelings for him. I was in love with him maybe. And, you know, things didn't work out. Now I'm feeling, I'm hating on her. When actually, no, mommy. I'm scared for you. And I'm more disgusted by this man standing in front of me. I'm disgusted. I'm mortified. I'm in complete disbelief that this is how he's approaching me after he did what he did. And so I looked at him and I'm like, and he goes, <laughs> And he walks off. Now, throughout that evening, he made it a point to keep on walking past me, trying to find a way to catch my attention, to show I'm with this lady, I'm with this lady. I really don't care. I really don't care. Care. If anything, I really feel bad for her. I'm feeling sad because I'm wondering, has he done this to you? Has he done this to you? Or do you know that he is capable of this foolery? I never saw... Or heard from that guy again. I say all of that. And I tell you this story time. To say this. And I hope you guys really really listen. Close to what I have to say. Number one. Your feelings matter. That is why. Part of the reason why consent is so important. What do I mean by that? It doesn't matter. If you've had. Physical intimacy with this person before willingly it doesn't matter if it's your boyfriend your girlfriend your wife your husband somebody you're dating and you've been physical with or you've been feeling anytime you don't want to do it that matters that feeling matters no is no you don't even have to go into detail about why you're not feeling it this time whether it's that you have a headache you're tired you don't feel like it you're in a bad mood you're, you're spiritually you're not in a good space mentally you're feeling emotional you're pyramid it does not matter just that feeling of I don't want to do it is enough. And I struggled with this for a very long time. With my ex-boyfriend who I dated for about two years, we had obviously been physically intimate before. And there came a point in the relationship where I didn't want to be intimate with him anymore. Number one, emotionally, I was not in that relationship you know, any, anymore. And also, I realized he just wasn't that nice of a guy. He became more stressed. And the more stressed he became with work and other personal family issues, the nastier he became with me. So I wasn't there with him emotionally. So the last thing I wanted to do was be physical. And unfortunately, I discussed it in one of my other videos. I didn't leave because something had happened in his life that was very traumatic and devastating. And I felt guilty getting up and leaving. I felt it would make me a bad person. So I stayed. But he 
throughout that period, even though I had verbally expressed to him, I don't want to be physical, emotionally, I'm not here with you. It's very traumatic and it's hard for me because we fight a lot. I'm not feeling it. He made me feel obligated. He made me feel as if he had every right to my body because number one, I had given it to him before and number two, he was my boyfriend. He made me feel like there would be consequences if I didn't do what he wanted me to do. And I couldn't quite reconcile those things. In my back of my mind, I kept on saying, Lala, but you've been physical with him before. So it's not technically rape or it's not technically wrong if you get physical with him, even if in that moment you don't feel like it because you've done it before. So he's not doing anything wrong. That's not true. Just that feeling of not wanting to do it was enough. It mattered. It should have been no. It was no. It should have never happened. Number two. Men, even ladies, you need to stop sulking when your partner does not want to be physically intimate. There is nothing cute about it. It is hella disturbing and quite frankly, rapey. It's disturbing. If your partner doesn't want to do it, why? So what is the thought process? You'll take it by force. Or even if you don't physically push them down, you're going to guilt them emotionally into doing it. Even, if, even knowing that they don't want to do it, you're just like, it's fine. It's what I want to do. Stop that. It's rapey. It's disgusting. It's inappropriate. Stop doing it. Ladies, men are not entitled to your bodies. The same way you are not, you are not entitled to their money. They are not entitled to your bodies. Vice versa. You are not entitled to his body. The same way he's not entitled to your money, your money, mommy. You are not entitled to his body. No is no is no is no. There shouldn't even be a conversation afterwards. If the person says, I don't want to do it, I don't feel like it, leave it. If you feel that emotionally something's going on or there could be an issue, address it later, but not in that moment when you're asking for it because it comes across as though you're trying to manipulate the person into doing something they don't want to do. No is no. Another thing I want you to say is that it's not only your right, but it is your duty to protect your body. And I'm not speaking, God forbid, to the people who have physically been restrained and raped. I'm talking about, again, that man saying whatever he's saying or kind of sulking or giving you an attitude after you say no. It is your duty to protect your body. There's a reason why you don't want to do it. Protect your body and protect your spirit. Guys, physical intimacy is very spiritual. It is very spiritual. Let me tell you something about the spiritual realm. It does not require your belief to exist. It exists as I'm doing this video. It is alive and kicking in that realm. It does not require your belief to exist. It exists. There are consequences, there are implications when you start to build those spiritual ties through intimacy. And I'm not going to go too deep into it. I've said, and I promise you guys, I will do that video for you at some point. I've said, I want to do it for you, but I want to accumulate more understanding and experience and knowledge before I just delve into that topic. But again, intimacy is very spiritual. You have a right to protect your spirit. Some people call it vibes. Other people call it aura, energy. You have, it's spiritual. And you have a right to, not, you know, not even you have a right. It is your duty to protect your spirit. It is yours. It is yours. Protect it. People will come in and dump all sorts of, and transfer all sorts of things, sometimes unknowingly. A lot of the times unknowingly. So if you don't want to do it, it is your duty to say no and to not do it. Don't allow, allow his sulking and his mood to, to make you feel some type of way. Another thing, mommy, please understand this. If the only way you're keeping him is through the physical intimacy, he is not yours. He is not yours. There'll come a time where physically you cannot do it, whether it be because you're traveling, because you're in labor, because you have just had an operation, because you've just given birth and you're stitched up and you can't do anything, he will go somewhere else and do it. So there is no point in trying to keep him that way and trying to keep him happy physically in order to keep him. He is not yours if the physical element is the only thing that is keeping him in place. With women too. 
If the only thing that's keeping baby girl there is you being physical with her when she wants it, every time she wants it, she's not yours. She will go and get it. If she doesn't get it from you, she'll go somewhere else. When you cannot give it to her, for whatever reason, she will go. Please be very conscious, guys. Another thing that I just want to put out there before I close this video, I feel like it's, it's all over the place and I apologize for that. I wish I had gathered my feelings, or not even my feelings, but this conversation a lot more neatly and presented it in a more... I don't know, clear or, you know, clear manner. I, and I apologize for that. And that, the last thing I wanted to say was that consent is important. It is important. And nothing, 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 nothing you've done or you didn't do or you said or didn't say, it is not your fault. Going back to the issue of how I was feeling when I left that guy's house, there is nothing I did in that situation that warranted him doing what he was doing. He was dead as going to rape me and there was nothing I did that warranted that. So please don't go back feeling and thinking that there's something you said or perhaps I took it too far or no, 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 no. The most important thing is consent. The moment you said no, it should have ended there. The conversation, the action, the everything should have ended there.